Hello, this is Aaron Eckhart, and you are listening to Center Stage with Mark Gordon, the beautiful one and only Mark Gordon. Welcome to Center Stage. My name is Mark Gordon. On this program, we're going to talk with Tom Shadiak. He's best known for the films Ace Ventura, Liar Liar, and Bruce Almighty. One day, a cycling accident left him incapacitated, possibly for life. Though he ultimately recovered, he emerged a changed man. Disillusioned with his life on the A-list, he sold his house, moved to a mobile home community, and decided to start life anew. Armed with nothing but his innate curiosity and a camera crew, Shadiak embarked upon a journey to discover how he as an individual and we as a race can improve the way we live. The result is the film, I Am. Tell me about the genesis of this project for you. Um, well, you know, you saw the film, so you know that I, I, I faced my own death uh, through a bike accident about three years ago. And in doing so, I thought, well, if I'm going to die, um, I had this condition called post-concussion syndrome, and I didn't think I was going to live. Uh, as an artist, is there anything I want to say before I go? And that's how the film was born. And I'd been changing my life and calling my life into question, noticing hypocrisies that my culture had taught me based on, you know, you know, just the cultural hum, if you will. And, and, um, and it didn't add up in terms of, um, how I wanted to be and who I wanted to be. So I started changing my life and, um, I wanted to share my story through this film. Many documentaries these days are telling us everything that's wrong, you know, and rightfully so. There's a lot that needs correction, but this is a film about a story that's not being told, which is really the story of who people really are. And it's a really positive, hopeful journey that we go on. Um, and you know, I, I am the director of Ace Ventura, so I use humor. You know, I use pacing, I use visuals, and so I think it creates a very different kind of uh, kind of documentary experience or film going experience. I thought it was interesting how, in the film, you talk about how people have this innate ability to be altruistic and helpful, but yet there's also this sense that we're indoctrinated in this country to get more, have more, and really kind of this kill or be killed mentality. Tell me about that. Well, we're a very young species, you know. Life has had four billion years to get itself together, if you will, and it did a pretty good job, and then along come humans about 165, 175,000 years ago. And, and we're a relatively young species now who are experimenting um, in a new model, you know, which was born about 10,000 years ago. I don't want to get carried away with the history here, and the film doesn't get carried away in the history. But this is a very young vision, and we thought, well, if I get enough for myself, you know, it's not just the rugged individualism of, that was born here in America, but it's it's been part of, uh, you know, the, the human story growing for m millennia. And it's not working, you know, and it, I think it, it, it basically um, defies what is the basic nature of reality, which is this idea that our, our, our spiritualists have told us, which now our mystics have told us, which now science is catching up with, not just quantum physics, which is showing us the connection at a micro level, but it's also the physical sciences, like our own biology, the natural sciences, like when we study the natural world, how everything really has a connection. And yet we've crafted a world based on the idea that everything is separate. So I take care of myself first, my stuff first, get you know myself built up on a hill, and then maybe I reach back. Einstein looked at the world, you know, possibly the greatest mind, you know, of the past century, and and he saw that we had lost the idea of the social function as a positive, and he said that was the major thing we had to overcome. We had to embrace the social function as a positive and embrace all the natural world and all mankind as brothers and sisters, and that's how we shift things. And he believed, as I believe, that without that kind of a shift, we as a species won't won't make it. You know, if we continue in the current model, um, we simply won't make it. Um, but the story is very hopeful because it's really not who we are. And I think once we wake up to that innate connectedness, you know, your body fires, your biology fires when you're in a loving 
compassionate state. Your physiology renews itself. You know, oxytocins are released. And when you're in the opposite state, you know, a state of anger, frustration, hate, your physiology literally breaks down. You get early onset diseases, stress-related diseases, you know, early heart attacks, diabetes, etc. And your mind doesn't work as well. That is biology telling you who you are and what you need to be in order to thrive. So that that's pretty hopeful, and it's not something we're being told. Well, there's an interesting part of your film where you actually go to this uh, institute that studies the heart, and you kind of were talking about that earlier, um, and how they they measured your emotions based on your heart. I, I, that's the one thing that really resonates with this film, is they stuck uh, like a Petri dish full of yogurt and little electrodes on there, and then they, they were talking to you, and you would say something negative, and this... this uh, meter went off the hook. Tell me about that, because that, well, that yeah, was crazy. It's, it's, it's this basic idea that our emotions affect other living systems. So we know that intuitively. We come home in a bad mood, and, you know, our spouse feels it and is affected. But we come home in a great mood, and that laughter, you know, and joy can be contagious. Well, we've also heard theories that you can talk to your plants, and, you know, th- those plants will grow faster, et cetera. Well, they've studied this, you know, they've studied this phenomenon, and there's an experiment that's been done repeatedly where human emotionality will affect the living system like yogurt is alive. It's a living system, and they hook that up, as you said, to a magnetometer. It registers a baseline reading, call it zero. And then if you sit the human being in front of it and you ask him or her to emote, think of you know someone who passed away in your family that makes you sad. Think of someone that brought great joy, something that brought great joy. Those emotional experiences that you have will affect the energy of the yogurt, your energy is related to the yogurts. And so when I was in that room, you know, I don't want to give anything away in the movie, but they put me through some emotional, you know, they asked me a couple questions that, you know, elicited some very strong emotional reactions with me and the yogurt reacted. And, you know, in our current scientific model, that sounds crazy. It's new agey. It's, you know, it's soft science, but that's our new model where things are not connected. You know, that's our new model or that's our old model, excuse me, where things are not connected. You know, Newtonian science, it's separate objects act according to fixed laws in time and space. But the new model of science says this is very possible and probable and likely because everything really is connected by what's called the field. You know, Einstein said the field is the only reality. So you're just seeing, you know, potentially a demonstration, and it's what we do in the movies, not necessarily scientific, because there's protocols were relaxed for filming, and they, but they have demonstrated this repeatedly. Um, what you're seeing is that something is occurring, and and it's pretty cool. It kind of opens things up a little bit. We have to think outside the box that we've been trained in. Do you um, look at yourself as being self-actualized? And you obviously had a great career. Um, as a filmmaker and still are making films, but you know, when you look at your life then and you look at now, do you think you're more self-actualized in this work than you were before? Well, you know, I think it's looking at it linearly and I appreciate that, but I like to look at it more holistically. You know, you and I hopefully will have another phone call in the future together and hopefully I'll be more, you know, a little further down the road. And I, and I look at it as kind of just, you know, um, vision and perception and waking up more and more and more. Um, so, yeah, I hope, you know, Mary Oliver is a poet that I wanted to interview. She's a friend, actually, the best-selling poet in America. She's a wonderful woman. Um, and Mary Oliver says, we do one thing or the other. We stay the same or we change. Congratulations if you've changed. I hope that I've changed, and uh, I hope my work reflects it. And I look back on my other work that I've done, and I'm, I'm very happy with it, you know. Um, uh, uh, I, I love spreading joy. I think it's, it's, it's a really wonderful thing. It's a form of prayer to, to send out a, a, the signal of laughter, you know, uh, through an Ace Ventura, something as childlike as that, or, you know, something that has a little more of a parable quality like uh, Liar Liar or, or, or The Nutty Professor or Bruce Almighty or Patch Adams. Um, but, yeah, look, I'm changing, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm hopefully going to continue that, you know. There seems in this day and age that there's this big mounting uncertainty about everything um, with the economy, with the environment and all that. Um, And now that people are trying to kind of get in touch with really their passion or really what is most important, how do you see the next uh, the next 10 years going for our society and culture? Well, I think we have a real chance of starting a revolution of perspective and then everything will change. Just like the revolution uh, happened through 
technology. And 10 years ago, we could never have predicted how we're talking to each other, you know, the cell phone, um, you know, uh, evolution that we've had, how we can communicate instantly with a, with a video or an instant chat, you know, that goes all the way around the world. Um, we couldn't have predicted that. But an idea happened that made all that possible. And I think 10 years from now, when we get a hold of the idea that we have not been looking at reality in its fullest sense, and when we embrace reality in its fullest sense, when we see what that science has been telling us, when we see what the physical sciences also are telling us, which is simply what the mystics and the ancient narratives from the native cultures have told us about this oneness and this unity, and that we're a family and we're a part of the web of life, and the Human Genome uh, Project now tells us that we're all related as brothers and sisters. That is science. We all come from the same lineage. When we embrace that story, a decade later, we're, it's it's going to all sh shift and change. We wouldn't think about uh, running an economic system the way we run it. And it's not about the system. I, I don't want to change the system. But you, when you awaken to your connection to your neighbor and even a stranger, then you simply want to, to share your gift, you know, whatever your gift is. Um, uh, whether it's growing a business that has a larger social purpose or whether it's uh, being an artist or whatever you do, you'll want to share it because it, because you'll understand how everything is connected. It's like wanting to take care of your own body. Um, so when that shift happens, and I believe it's in process and we'll have a choice, you know, whether to embrace it or to look at it and deny it, ignore it, which is the root of ignorance, um, I think everything can change. You know, we'll still have many problems. We're still mortal. We're still finite, you know, but the context of everything will change. And we'll stop this story that we tell. The story that we tell every night on the news is the aberration. Mm. It's not who we are. Millions of acts of love will happen in your community, in this community, where I'm at. I'm in San Francisco. That will not go reported. One car gets stolen, and that's the story on the evening news, and we think that's the story of humanity, and it is not. It's much grander than that. You've learned a lot with this process, but what do you think ultimately is your takeaway from working on this film, I Am? Um, well, my takeaway is, is I've gone from hope to faith, and hope is the belief that we're going to possibly get there, and faith is the belief we will get there. And I've seen so many, and we've screened this for thousands of people, and it's just a start, but I've seen so many people whose hearts are open and who feel that a new way is coming, and they are a part of that new way and wish to be a part of that new way. Uh, so my takeaway is, you know, in spite of all the challenges, and there have been a gazillion challenges in this movie, which has got a low budget and no marketing department, et cetera, and we rely on people to tell our story. With all those challenges, I see this incredible light, you know, and it's a light that's bursting forth that I hope to be a small part of and serve, and I see millions of others being a part of and serving. So it, it's good news. Uh, that doesn't make me less active. That makes me more active. Until next time, this is Mark Gordon, and I'll see you center stage. Hello, this is Homer Simpson. Whenever I want to know what's going on in the entertainment world, I listen to Center Stage with Mark Gordon. <laughs>